Hi guys and welcome to a new video on Mini Milner. So I had this Hackintosh you see behind me for over a year and it's been serving me very well. Actually, most of the videos on this channel have been edited on it, but a lot has changed during that period. For instance, we got the Apple M1 chip, which now you can find on the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, the iMac and the iPad Pro. I was actually very happy when Apple ditched Intel for their own silicon. This meant that they could actually bring new level of performance to the Mac, same way they do every year with their A series chip we find on the iPhone and the iPad. Hold on a sec. Didn't you just say that you are using a Hackintosh? Is it not powered by an Intel CPU? Well, that's true. But the big picture is more complicated than that. Allow me to explain, please. You see, this was always doomed to happen. Even though a couple of years back, I remember some people in the tech community were absolutely convinced that Apple will ditch Intel for AMD because they had a great relationship when it comes to the GPUs. I did not really buy it. Not because I often get internal memos from Apple or anything like that. It's because that did not align with what Apple has as a philosophy. You remember when Steve Jobs said this? People who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. That was always their North Star. With anything they do to make their software for their own hardware. Including, of course, components like CPU and GPU, which are the pillars for compute performance. Okay. Let me put it for you this way. Imagine that the iPhone did not come with an Apple SoC, but instead some chip from Qualcomm or Samsung, for example. Do you think that the iPhone would be as successful as it is now? Well, I don't think so. Let's say it was Samsung, for example. Do you think that they would put a better SoC on the iPhone? while competing with Apple at the same time, no company in their right mind would do that. Even Google is now making their own Tensor SoC. It's all about integration of software and hardware. This is not only for smartphones. Even in the PC world, we see companies like AMD unlocking features only their CPU and GPU combo can do. For example, Smart Access Memory or SAM. Intel is also rumored to be doing the same thing with their Arc GPUs. Okay, okay, I know all of this, you might say. What does it have to do with Hackintoshin? Well, it doesn't mean that Hackintoshin is dead yet. I would be very surprised if we get more than six years of macOS support for Intel base Macs, meaning that by the year 2027, Apple is still releasing OS updates to old Macs. Let's go back in time. During the PowerPC to Intel transition, which was announced at WW 2005, Apple sees support for booting on PowerPC after macOS 10.6, Snow Leopard, in August 2009. So that was three years after the transition was complete and support for PowerPC application via Rosetta 1 was dropped from macOS 10.7 Lion in July 2011. That's five years after the transition was complete. So I honestly think that Hackintosh, as we know it, meaning you can just go back, buy some PC hardware, put it together, install macOS, and that's it, that has a maximum of five years. After that, it will become obsolete. Same thing that is happening now to people with NVIDIA GPUs. They are stuck with old software. They cannot get new updates. So unless the community of hackers comes up with some form of virtual machine that could emulate Apple Silicon on Intel or AMD x86 platform, it would never happen. So what about my Hackintosh then? Will I sell it and stick to the M1 Mac mini you see behind me here? No, not so fast. I still think that Hackintosh is great now for people who need it. Like if you already have PC that is compatible with macOS, you can try and install it. Why not? 
If you are like me and you built your PC as a Hackintosh from scratch for video editing, creative work, but at the same time you are a serious gamer. Yes, that's one of the advantages of Hackintosh over my M1 Mac Mini. I can actually play games when I finish work. I'm talking about big games like Warzone or Battlefield at 1440p, 144Hz, not Hot Lava or Candy Crush. Yes, the M1 is capable of casual gaming and it's very impressive, but I wouldn't satisfy my needs as a gamer if I just play on it. I can also add storage to my Hackintosh easily without using external hubs. Talking about hubs, my Hackintosh of course has more I.O which is very handy for a lot of cases. I can also boot multiple OS's, which is not possible anymore on the M1. Because of bootcamp, it's gone. You're stuck with virtualization, which is fine, but let's be honest, it's still a VM after all. So there are a lot of things to like about a Hackintosh, even in 2021. The next video is actually very exciting. I will be doing a direct comparison between my Hackintosh and the M1 Mac Mini, as well as the M1 MacBook Air. It will be the ultimate showdown, so make sure to leave a like and subscribe to not miss that video. We will compare their performance. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.